fractals. The part of mathematics that blurs the line between algebra and art. Now I know what you're all thinking. What in the world are you talking about? Let's start off from the beginning. So the basics. A fractal is any complex geometric shape with fractional dimension. In English, it means a fraction of the original image contains the whole image. Let me explain that. Take this line for example, and I cut it in half. If I look at one of the halves, it is identical to the original, just half the size. And I'm pretty sure you don't want to listen to me talk about lines. Yodel, show us the funny blob thing. Okay. This is the Mandelbrot set, discovered by this guy, Francois Mandelbrot. So one day, he decided to do some crazy mathematical wizardry, which gave me a headache when I tried to delve into it, so I'm going to simplify it for all our sakes. So basically, he took a group of equations called monsters, which are so big they cannot be represented smallly, and told his computer to smack them together until he found a similarity, which gave him this equation. And now we go into complex numbers. Buckle up, this is going to be bumpy. When you think of numbers, you imagine a number line. You know, positive, negative, zero in the center. But let me show you this guy. The imaginary number. But really, all it is is the square root of negative one. And I can already hear it as I write this script. That is impossible because everything squared has to be positive. So mathematicians made up a brand new number to make a loophole for that. Now let's take our number line. But we have an issue. Where would we stick the imaginary number? Well, a mathematician decided to be like, you know what? Let's just stick it on top of zero, and now we have a grid. And now, our numbers can be really weird. This is where Mr. Mandelbrot comes back in. He took his fancy function and tossed it into a complex number graph. So what the function does is we put z as zero. And we put c as any complex number. The function will cycle through these over and over again, and if the number explodes, as in gets unnecessarily big, it is designated unstable. And if the number stays within 2 and repeats forever, it is a stable number. Then what the computer does is assign a color to whether or not the number is chill or terrifying. The stable numbers are traditionally marked black, while the unstable numbers are pretty much marked any color you really wish. Okay, now the scary stuff is over with, let us see what these are used for. Now, what are these Lovecraftian geometric monsters used for? Well, a lot more than just looking pretty. These things make file compression possible, yep, Zip uses this stuff. Fractals are used in simulating development of cancer, not even doctors are safe. And the largest scale, fractals are used in simulation of erosion and climate change. Well, you would think you are safe from fractals because they only exist in math. Wrong, they are everywhere. Look at this fern, it's a fractal. This cauliflower, it is also a fractal. That tree, it is a fractal. Not even the earth is safe. Rivers are fractals. And worst of all, your nervous system is a fractal. There is no escape. In reality, they're not scary. It's just a perfect tool to represent the natural way nature grows and expands. Look at this shot of a city, for example. It follows a very similar path to a fractal. And look at this shot of a fractal. I would say it looks pretty close to a road network, would you agree? So, in conclusion, Fractals are used every day and everywhere you look. It's a shining example of how math is everywhere. everywhere.